So much of the developing world today faces a situation of absolute poverty. You're working from dawn to dusk for two to three dollars a day. They're struggling to put food on the table. They struggle to keep their kids in school. Those things become everyday battles. Nos pagaba un precio muy bajo, muy barato. O sea, ellos lo pagaban como a ellos le daba, venía en gana, porque nuestro producto a veces no se iba a deteriorar en la finca. Typically, farmers sell to the local middleman, and that middleman dictates price. So, of course, that locks farmers into a situation of poverty because they're getting pennies on the dollar for their coffee or their flowers, their bananas, whatever it is they're producing. In southern Ecuador, Victor Cicilema Jr. had to quit school to help support his family after he finished sixth grade. He seemed to be following in the footsteps of his father, whose own education had come to an abrupt halt decades earlier. No les importaba a nuestros padres, qué sé yo. Como el estudio, no, no, como que no valía nada. No, no, más nos dedicamos era al, al, al trabajo. But in 2010, 18 years after he dropped out, Victor Jr. became the first person in his family to graduate from high school. He's learning how to use a computer and preparing to study agronomy in college. His father went back to school too and is now studying math. Changes made possible because they now get a fair price for their bananas. You know, poor farmers don't want our charity. They just want a fair price. If farmers can find a market for their products and go directly to that market, then they can get much, much more money for their harvest. It's called fair trade, and it means not only paying farmers more, but also making sure they grow food in a way that protects the environment. In the United States, products that have been certified to meet the rigorous fair trade standards carry a logo from Transfair USA, an organization whose roots date back to 1990, when founder Paul Rice helped a handful of Nicaraguan farmers start a coffee cooperative. Our first year, we were able to pull together 24 brave souls who filled one container of fantastic coffee and we sold it to a fair trade buyer who paid us $1.24 per pound at a time when the local market price was 10 cents. Within the next two years, we were able to bring 3,000 families into this co-op that was getting three, four, five times more than they would have otherwise. And that, in turn, generated this whole process of community development. And it made me realize that the market is not the enemy. The market is actually the most powerful lever for change that we have. Starting with coffee in 1999, Transfair USA has since expanded its certification program to dozens of products, such as sugar, tea, chocolate, flowers, and bananas. They're sold in thousands of stores, small and large, including Starbucks and Costco, Walmart, and Whole Foods Market. Fair trade certified producers are providing a higher quality product. And we believe that the customer understands that there's something unique about the products that we sell because of the care that's been taken in those products production. For a farmer to receive fair trade status, he or she has to meet a 200 point checklist of social, economic, and environmental criteria. It's not easy. It's everything to be chopped for compost. Compost, that's great. Right. Goes everything to compost. Yeah. Eduardo Latorte owns the Oja Verde Plantation in northern Ecuador. Of the country's 400 rose farms, it's one of only 10 that have earned fair trade certification. It's very important for us is to have our consumers assured that we are using less pesticides, that we are having less impact in the way we produce. And it's guaranteed by a third person that we are doing something right. And doing something right means not only protecting the environment, but also taking care of workers like Johanna Kitiakes. Before she got her current job at Oja Verde, she worked at a conventional rose farm. 
Ay, casi no nos pagaban horas de extras. Y a veces casi no éramos ni afiliados ni al seguro, ¿no? Acá, en cambio, en, en hoja verde es muy diferente. Acá nos ayudan en todo, al menos la maternidad. Y dice que compró un... Fair Trade has, without a doubt, changed Johanna's life. She makes better wages, and she has access to benefits that would not be available on another farm. Benefits like regular on-site medical care. When a routine checkup showed early stage cancer, Johanna received free treatment that may have saved her life. In the other finca, no, ni siquiera hubiese hecho por mí. Pero gracias a Dios, todo todo bien. Y hasta ahorita sigo, sigo aquí acompañándoles y sigo trabajando. In addition to getting medical benefits, workers at Oja Verde use the extra money from Fair Trade to create their own home loan fund. In 2009, Johanna borrowed $5,000 to buy her own plot of land. Estamos aquí en mi terreno. Mi casa va a ir ahí, de dos pisos, de teja, como esas casas de, que son de China. En el jardín para que jueguen mi, mis hijos si es que tengo algún día más. By making the purchase of the fair trade product, you can be assured that you are making a difference, that you are helping to save the environment, that you are helping to lift people out of poverty, that you are improving the world. In just 10 years, fair trade has become a mainstream phenomenon. In the United States, shoppers can now find certified products at more than 50,000 retail stores. All across the country, consumers are stepping up and voting with their dollars by buying fair trade products. It's not just about helping farmers find their voice. It's about helping us find ours.